Well, folks, it pays not to work. Hawaii residents receive highest welfare benefits in the United States. I want to read this article, but I'm only reading this article so I can share with you another doozy about the state of Hawaii and what the politicians are trying to do to you. <clears throat> okay, this is from the Hawaiian Reporter. Dated... Um, just last week. It pays not to work. Hawaiian residents receive the highest welfare benefits in the United States. Let me just read a little bit. I'm not going to read the entire cause, entire article because I want to get over to the other article, which is more important. But I want to give you an idea what's going on here as far as there being a welfare state. A new report by the Cato Institute, which examines state-by-state -state value of welfare for a mother of two, said benefits in Hawaii average $49,175,000. Let me read that again. Uh, the Cato Institute, which examines state-by-state -state, uh, welfare recipients, um, the value of welfare for a mother of two in Hawaii averages $49,175 per family, mother of of two, tops the nation. $49,175,000. I work, and I work hard, and I make just a few thousand dollars above that. Michael Tanner, co-author of the Cato study, said that since welfare isn't taxed, I didn't know that actually. I did not know that. So they're making far more than I am because my money is taxed. I have to pay approximately a third of my income. I did not know this. Let me repeat that. Holy crap. I might just quit my job tomorrow and get on welfare. Sorry, folks, but you're going to have to pay for me. Let me just read this. I'm, I'm furious. Michael Tanner, co-author of Cato study that said that since welfare isn't taxed, a person would have to earn $60,590 in Hawaii to take home the same $49,000 $175 a person on welfare would. So you would have to technically make $60,590 to equate to the $49,000 because once you take out the taxes. And I think that's bull crap because my taxes come out a little bit more than that. That's weird. To be clear, there's no evidence. Michael Tanner's talking, it's in quotes. To be clear, there's no evidence that people on welfare are lazy. Indeed, surveys of them consistently show their desire for a job. But since they're, not, they're also not stupid, that is, if you pay them more not to work, then you can earn... Wait. But also, they're not stupid. If you pay them more not to work, then they can earn by working. They will choose not to work, Tanner said in a summary of this report. Okay, so that's all. This is actually a long article. It's going off topic. I want to get over to the other article, that, which is most important. But imagine that. Imagine on being on welfare. That's supposedly you're on in poverty on welfare. $49,175 non-taxed? We're just talking welfare now. I don't even know what also they're making on freaking food stamps, access insurance, and various insurance programs. Holy crap. Let me get over to the other article really quick. The name, the title of this article. Come on, computer, don't lock up. 
Hawaii considers a universal basic income as robots seen stealing jobs. There's just one catch. Forget Social Security, Medicaid, and WIC. That was the other welfare program. I'm, they're probably getting WIC, as well as some other stuff. Forget Social Security, Medicaid, and WIC. Today's progressives have moved well beyond discussing such entitlement relics of the past and nowadays dedicate their efforts to the concept of a universal basic income for all. Call it the New Deal. You know, because having to work for that car in every garage and chicken in every pot is just considered cruel and unusual punishment by today's standards. Of course, it should come as little surprise that the progressives, that the progressive state of Hawaii, which depends on easily automated, on easily automated jobs tied to tor tied to the tourist industry is among the first to pursue a universal basic income for its residents. And while the idea of passing out free money to everybody seems like a genius plan, if we understand it correctly, a CBS points out, a CBS points out, that's what it says. I'm wondering if it says it means a CBS reporter points out. There's just one catch, figuring out who pays it. And then it goes on to explain the automation that has occurred. Now, I've talked about automation, and people laughed at me in my past videos, my argument against raising the minimum wage. I laid out about five points why it's bad to raise the, the minimum wage. My fifth point was automation, because it comes to a point where you have to pay humans so much money it's just cheaper to hire a robot to, to work 24 hours a day and you just grease the freaking ball joints in the damn thing. Okay? Um, and that's what's going on. Some of, some of the uh, automation that's occurring in Hawaii, as well as the United States, is driverless trucks, factory robots, delivery drones, virtual personal assistants. For example, when you call... You want to talk to, I don't know, your credit card company. No longer do people answer the phone anymore. It's all freaking automated. It's all automated. Oh, and now they're, and they've actually been doing it for years now. The automation is, is sometimes sounds like a sexy lady. You know what I mean? Now, now it's getting to that point. As technological innovation increasingly edge into the workplace... Many people fear that robots and machines are destined to take the jobs that human beings have held for decades. A trend that is already happening in stores, factories around the country. For many affected workers, retraining might be out of reach, unavailable, unaffordable, or inadequate. For example, I watched my Walmart, local Walmart, little Walmart here, go from one self-checkout um, aisle to approximately eight and at any time of the day all eight of those self-checkout aisles are going and you have one possibly two humans manning a normal register pretty soon there'll be one human manning a normal register over the past two decades automation has reduced the need for workers especially in blue-collared sectors as manufacturing, warehousing, and mining. Many of the jobs that remain demand higher education or advanced technological skills. It helps, it helps explain why 55% of Americans with no more than a high school diploma are employed, down from 60% just before the Great Recession. Hawaii state lawmakers had voted to explore the idea of universal basic income in light of research suggesting that a majority of waiter, cook, and building cleaning jobs vital to Hawaii's tourism depend on, dependent on the economy will eventually be replaced by machines. The crucial question 
of who would pay for the program has yet to be determined. Oh, they figured it out, trust me. They just don't want to let you know. But support for the idea has taken root. Our economy is changing far more rapidly than anybody has expected, said Representative Chris Lee, who introduced the legislation to consider a guaranteed universal income. Lee said, it's, Lee said he felt it's important to be sure that everybody will benefit from the technological revolution that we're seeing to make sure no one is left behind. Hmm. So giving them free money is going to help them. Not, not, not telling them to get out and get an education or learn something. Or maybe work and not keep gouging the owners of the businesses for more money. By taking billions from hardworking Americans to spread the wealth around has never been all that difficult, he said. Before, so presumably this would, th this too should prove to be a relatively minor issue. So he's basically betting that he can fool the people into it. They don't want to tell you how they're going to pay until they get the freaking voters on board with this. Once all the voters want it, or the majority of them want it, then he'll, then he'll, then he'll spill the beans on who's going to pay. And I'll tell you what, this is how it's done. We both know that the taxpayer is going to pay for this, but it's not as simple. You will pay your taxes into the system. You think that money is going directly towards this program or a portion of that money is allocated towards a portion of this universal health care. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, universal... Um, oh, gosh, I'm falling asleep here. Uh, and now my computer decides to lock up. U universal basic income. You, 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 you theorize that your money is just going to be a section of that money, let's say you pay 20% taxes or whatever it is, 30% taxes, you're going to assume, the simpleton will assume that, oh, well, a certain amount of money is just going to go uh, directly into that pot for the universal um, income for these people. I keep calling it universal income, but you know what I'm talking, the, the universal basic income. But that's not how it is. No. Everything that is spent is borrowed. So your money actually gets goes right to the um, the Federal Reserve, it pays off the interest where they borrow more, then it goes to the universal basic income. That's how it's worked. So not only will you be taxed, but you'll then have to pay the interest on that money that is borrowed to pay for this program. So they don't tax you directly. Your taxes don't go directly to programs. Mm -mm -mm. Your taxes go to pay off the federal, the 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 the, the federal loans. The the uh, uh, God, I'm I'm so tired. I can't even think straight. The federal debt. Your your money goes directly to pay the federal debt. Then they borrow more money for the programs that you think your taxes are going to. That's how it works, folks. So you can bet when you start paying for this universal basic income, you'll pay for it. But you'll also pay interest on that, is what I'm trying to articulate. Um, Hawaii is the first to do it, and you can bet California will follow suit, and the rest of the uh, other states, such as New York, will then come next. Um, it's a system of slavery. Because, let's just say, hypothetically, hypothetically, let's just say everybody in the United States, everybody right now starts making one million dollars a year it's universal basic income they give you all the money you want however the price of the products will skyrocket to where a million dollars won't buy shit excuse my language so no matter what amount of money they give away it will be pittance compared to the price of everything um, because if nobody's working how does the you know what I mean? These businesses still need to make money. And um, even though there's robots and you're not working, they still want your money. Unfortunately, 
the simpletons think that their money is going to buy everything. No. Like I said, they can be paid a, a million dollars a year and it'd be worthless, pretty much worthless. Anyway, folks, I think I bored you enough. Um, appreciate a thumbs up, as always, and I, I do appreciate the uh, new subscribers. And uh, take care. Thank you very much.